We emit roughly 27 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. If we look back over the past thousand years, we can see that the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has been quite stable until about a hundred years ago when it started rising steadily. The average temperature was also quite stable until about the same time when it too started rising. Today it is about 0.7 degrees Celsius warmer than a hundred years ago. In the latest reports, the experts project that the temperature of the Earth will continue rising by between 1.5 and 5.8 degrees Celsius in the coming century. The extent of this increase will depend on the level of our emissions from now on. If we consider what a 0.7 degree rise in temperature has already done in the Caribbean, we can only imagine what a 3 degree rise could do. To try and predict what changes we will have to face, CARICOM member countries established the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center in central Belize. Computer models developed with partners in the UK are helping scientists project the likely changes in temperature and rainfall throughout the region. The projected changes will have many impacts on our society and our economy, but one issue stands out as a particularly important one food security. At two degree rise of temperature, research shows that our rice, beans and corn crops, the yield will fall by 20%. So again, severe impacts for the food supply. And this is the message we need to take out to the population so that they start to take adaptive op options for these uh, various impacts. Much of the Caribbean relies on imported food, which is becoming more expensive and harder to obtain. Uh, when we look at the heavy importation of food into the region, this is another issue because we've had a study which shows that some of the major imports into the region, cereal for instance, uh, from Canada and from the States, that the wheat growing areas will be affected. So it might have an effect on prices and our ability to import staples. But apart from that, we import a whole set of food into the region that we need not import. And so we may need to revisit how we produce our food. I think we can produce the same food here. If we get a little more assistance here, I'm talking, I, I'm talking mainly about Tobago here because I can't give me anything about outside of Tobago. So I am talking more about Tobago. Tobago could produce very much more food for the sustenance of the inhabitants of Tobago. Because we have the, 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 the resources here where we can produce food but we need assistance. Rising temperatures and drier conditions will increase the likelihood of longer and harsher droughts in many countries. And not surprisingly, water shortages could become a major concern. Some countries are becoming increasingly dependent on desalination plants. But as the cost of fuel increases, this will place yet another financial burden on governments and communities. A better and longer term solution is to improve the management of catchment areas. Reforestation and more sensitive hillside developments help to refill underground reservoirs and prevent soil erosion. This will not only safeguard fresh water supplies, but also prevent siltation of our coral reefs. Perhaps the most uncertain and yet most worrying consequence of climate change for Caribbean countries is sea level rise. The rate of sea level rise is increasing due to the melting of glaciers and polar ice caps. Only recently have scientists found that both the Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets are melting at an accelerating rate. 
there is also mounting evidence that we may be approaching what is called a tipping point, a point where the melting of the Greenland ice sheet will become irreversible, causing a 7 meter rise in sea level. Once we pass that tipping point um, that comes with, uh, with, with sea level rise as, as the ice caps melt, there will come a time when we would we would find that we no longer have a voice simply because we are we have just been completely um, overtaken by events. Now is the time to act. Now is the time that we can actually say something and make a difference in in the world. Now is the time for the Caribbean and member states, each government, to take very seriously its responsibility and come up with a position, a collective position, which ensures that we are not simply uh, bystanders in the debate about carbon and its emissions, but in fact we become real players because we have the voice of it, uh, the equivalent to, 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 to Europe when you think of it. And we must become part of that whole debate. Okay, well one thing, you know, we have to accept is that it is here, it has begun. And one of the things I think Caribbean people really have to do is to realize what it is that they have at stake and to get around the round table, everybody, and decide how we're going to adapt to this. So mitigation is still important. Change our way of lives or alter it. The amount of energy we are using, stop following first world countries. Yes, we didn't start it, but we are going to have to live with it. While the responsibility for reducing emissions of greenhouse gases lies mainly in the hands of the developed countries, Developing countries can also play a part in fighting climate change. Mitigation basically is now a global issue and there's no point sitting and pointing fingers and saying you are to blame and you must take the, the action. Of course we look at the developed countries to take aggressive action for mitigation. We also look at them as a result of that responsibility for, for the issue to help us basically to address not only mitigation, but adapt adaptation. The Caribbean is rich in clean, renewable energy, such as wind and solar power. A demonstration solar house in Bridgetown proves that using solar power is not only technically possible, but financially rewarding. What we have on this house are 20 100 watt solar panels. We have 12 on the front of the house and we then have another eight on the back. What we actually have here is a solar panel. The solar panel consists of individual solar cells. Each solar cell generating electricity in its own right instantaneously without any moving parts. Getting energy directly from the sun knowing that there's something on your roof that mysteriously produces electricity that you use on a daily basis gives you that feeling of empowerment and connection with the sun that no other fossil fuel derived electricity can do. Other countries should follow their lead and seize an opportunity for financial assistance from developed countries. Caribbean countries that have plentiful supplies of oil and gas, such as Trinidad and Tobago, should be using this opportunity to diversify their energy sector and improve efficiency. So we export energy and we benefit of, of, of um, the fossil fuel economy, uh, which is producing the major, the major producer of the, the climate warming. Um, as a small island, we are also one of the major victims of climate change because we have small land area, we have sea level rise, uh, we have coastal erosion taking place, we have our valued coral reefs being affected. So I think the Trinidad and Tobago has an ethical responsibility to contribute to the solution. The population of the Caribbean may be small, but we have a loud and strong voice we can offer the world a powerful message of unity. The resources that are there, the scientists already have the information on how it could be done. It's all a matter of not getting people into action and, and, and bring a cohesion within the international co community. Every man, woman and child on planet Earth, I don't care who it is, of 
united in one action to protect Mother Earth because this is our home, you know? We are going around the sun together, not as individuals, as one family, one human race, one human family, and we have to do it as one.